In this video, I want to talk about a few of my favorite human in the loop methods that you can incorporate into your workflows. All right. Now, you may be familiar with human in the loop, the concept of making sure that the human, us, actually has some say in the process that our bots are acting on. Now, we don't want our bots just completely fully automated, going off and doing their whole thing from start to finish. And then we never see anything until the end result. And then we're like, oh man, no, that's not what you're supposed to be doing, bot. You should have done this. And so by having a human in the loop method incorporated into your systems, you allow yourself the space to be able to double check their work. Think of it like a really smart intern. All right, interns are great. They can accomplish great things, but they're probably gonna break something somewhere because they're an intern. They don't really know how to do everything quite right yet. It's a matter of training and training and training. And until they get to the point that they don't need any more training, you have to step in as their manager. Now, I've identified three methods here. There might be more, but these are the three that I use the most frequently. The first was well, actually the second. I, I, I use this one second more than anything. Eh, maybe third. Um, I, this is the one I use first, number two, conversational. But we'll get there. So the first one that most people talk about on YouTube at the very least is the actual human in the loop node. All right, and so this is just a node. You, you just add it, you come over here, human in the loop, you pick which one you want, and then you stick it in. So if you wanna send it uh, via Google chat, you just set that in there. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna send a message via this, this platform here. I'm gonna go and delete that. And then it's gonna wait for you to respond. So here I just got a click trigger. It's gonna send this. I have it hooked up to one of my Slack bots. It's gonna send me a message, sending me a message to the user. And simply, is this approved? Now, obviously you'd wanna send in like a draft or the output of something or whatever. And then you would set in some sort of approval process and you can create approval options. How do you want it approved? Do you want approval only? Do you want uh, approve or disprove? Do you want, um, how do you want it to, the button to be featured? All of that, okay? And so if we just run it really quick, what's gonna happen is it's gonna send me a message via Slack. It's gonna say waiting for input. All right, and here I got a message in my Slack bot and it's just gonna say, is this approved? Now, I, I was just testing this a few minutes ago to make sure it worked. All right, and then we're just gonna hit approve. We're gonna message from NADN saying it's all good. We come back to NADN and it's done. We get our output of true, approved has been true. So then it's gonna move forward with the process. Now, if I had a different system in there, it might have, you might be able to do an if then, and then go through other processes, maybe a loop to come back, try again. Um, this method is cool if you're there while it's waiting, because if you have the system going and it sends you a message, it's gonna sit there and it's gonna wait and wait and wait. And there's a chance it can time out. You know, it's, there's a chance that you might miss the message. So it's not my favorite process. Uh, my favorite process is actually this one here, which is what I call a conversational approval process. And so you'll see this in a lot of the different workflows that I put out onto my channel. However, the way it works is I have some sort of input that comes into an AI agent that has a structured output parser. Now I pulled this one from my deep research bot. And so if I actually went into it, you'd see the system prompt for a, a deep research bot. Its job is to pull out um, this research topic that I want as well as um, just, that's it, just the research topic and whether I'm giving approval. Now, when I first ask the bot to do something, that's not approval, that's me asking it to do something. And so what the bot's gonna do is the output parser is going to say, no, I have not given approval. And so this if node here is checking to see if I have something in here as marked undefined. So the thing that I'm asking it to do wasn't able to be determined, so it's marked undefined or if approval is marked as no. And because I have not given approval yet in my most current message to the bot, therefore approval is no. And it would go through this process up here, which is gonna send me a message saying, hey, here's what we think you want to have happen. Or if it doesn't know what I want, then hey, can you tell us what you want to have happen and give us approval for it? In which case I would say, yeah, that sounds good. Go ahead and do it. And then on the next iteration, this bot is gonna see the, the right thing that I asked it to do, and it's gonna see my message saying, yes, I've given you approval. And so um, if you wanna see an example of it in action, I do recommend going checking out the deep research bot. I will include a link in the description below. Um, hopefully I can remember to do that, all right? Um, and then you can check out how this works in practice. My, this is my favorite method, by the way, because I like being there, chatting with my bot, and when I tell my bot to do something, I want it to respond to me. 
And as it's responding, I'm interacting with it. That way I can, if I'm done for the day, I just hang it up on the shelf. I don't have to worry about extra messages popping up that I need to give approval for at all hours. Um, this allows me just to have a conversation with the bot. I can always go back to those threads later. The final method that I use, it's actually probably the second most common, like this, this one up here was the one everybody thinks about. But the one uh, the second most common would be what I call a spreadsheets approval process. I guess I'll keep that in, in view so you can see it. A spreadsheets approval process. So you have bots. These bots are putting data somewhere. Good chance they're either putting it into a spreadsheet or an Airtable sheet of some type, a database somewhere. If you have a column in a spreadsheet that it has a checkbox in it, these checkboxes are essentially just true-false boxes. That's all they are. And so you're able to add in a trigger. It's a Google Sheets trigger that is checking for rows to be updated. In this case, it's looking for row one or column one, I should say, to be updated. And you can set this to whatever column you have a checkbox set as. Now, you can also, um, I don't know if you know this, but here in Google Sheets, you can change the type of column it is by coming over here um, to this little drop down, edit column type. And this is a table. I do all of my operations in tables because it allows me to have this functionality here of just changing what it is. Boom, I just created another uh, checkbox. I can come in here, I can create a drop down menu. I can create all kinds of stuff within this table because it's already structured that way within Google Sheets. I love Google Sheets. Point being, I'm getting back to, I'm a little get off topic here. When I can set the column that has these checkboxes as an approval column. And so when I re am ready to approve it, all I have to do is check it and now it's approved. And by having this here, this trigger node set to pull every minute, it's looking inside of that spreadsheet. It's looking to see whether a row has been updated. It's going to output the information from these rows and it's looking for that column. It comes through an if node. Let's just go ahead and uh, run this real quick. It's gonna find seven rows, boom. It's gonna run it through this if node here that is looking in column one and checking to see if it's marked as true. So I have two is marked as true. Go ahead and execute and boom, I'm gonna get two outputs on my true path that can then be processed and then I can have uh, no operation on everything else. Now, this is important. If you are gonna use that process, when this has been completed, you need some other method of removing that row or marking that row done or some other extra step in here that prevents it from actually being acted upon again. So I might have another if node here like this, where I would then say maybe column six is my done completed. If it says done, then it would process those separately because if it's already been acted on, we don't want it to act again. And so it's only, we only want it to act on something that has been recently approved and is, needs to be taken action on. All right, so those are the three main human in the loop methods that I use. I think they're probably the only three that you need. If there's another one out there um, or a better one out there, please let me know. Let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to learn and grow myself. Um, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. You can also go and join my free school community. I've got a ton of workflows in there, all for free. I've got a ton of tutorials. If you wanna join my advanced community, I have advanced versions of a lot of my workflows. I've got my full Roger 3.0 executive assistant suite available in my advanced community. It's a 31 workflow behemoth that can do everything from email to scheduling, to taking your notes for you, acting on those notes, you know, coordinating your calendar, all kinds of really cool stuff. I'm giving so much value here. I love you guys. I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.